How is it going everyone? Daxels here and today we're going to be reacting to Let Me Know Top 10 Facts About Reddit. Let's get straight into it. And away we go. Just let me know. Just let me know. In April of 2005, two American university students named Alexis Ohanian and Steve Huffman had an idea okay. for a mobile food ordering service called My Mobile Menu. The service would allow you to order food on your phone and thus bypass the need for queues. But this was 2005, before the iPhone and the subsequent smartphone revolution, so convincing wow. the public to use their snake machines for something <laughs> more practical would be next to impossible. The idea was simply too far ahead of its time. Oh, so wow. while brainstorming Imagine. for a new idea, they eventually decided to abandon the mobile market in favor of a news aggregation website, which an investor defined as the front page of the internet. Uh, this would go. later become the adopted slogan of the website, which they initially called Reddit. Snoo, oh. a portmanteau Snoo? of what's new. Oh. The intention was for people to ask what's new, and as such they would essentially answer their own question. Unfortunately, the domain name had already been taken. Oof. Other potential names included Ubaloo, 360 Scope, Hot Snoo, Ripe Fresh, Yo. Dose Dose, and numerous others. They went Eventually, the name Reddit loads. was suggested by Ohanian, and much like Snoo, Reddit so is a portmanteau Reddit. of Red It, as in I read it on Reddit. The term Snoo was later repurposed as the name for the mascot of the company, except with an alternate spelling. It kept it, that's On the pog. 23rd of June 2005, Reddit, along with its fantastic misuse of white space, made its debut. The very first post, submitted by Ohanian himself, is titled The Downing Street Memo and remains online to this day. Over the following months, both Ohanian and Hoffman created numerous fake accounts in order to populate the desolate website with interesting oh, links to give any okay. unsuspecting visitors the illusion of a thriving online community, much like what Google Plus is doing today. A commenting system oh. would not be implemented until December, and with typical Reddit enthusiasm, the very first comment on the submission announcing the ability to comment is someone complaining about the fact that comments <laughs> are now a thing. The announcement to allow users to create their that's own so subreddit in March of 2008 provoked an equally enthusiastic response. But now, over a decade later, it is difficult to imagine the website without comments and yeah. specialized communities. Wow. Imagine complaining Throughout about the comments. mid to late 2000s, Reddit was in fierce competition with another very similar website known as Dig. Reddit Never was heard of a it. few months after Dig, but the main oh. features were more or less the same. You could post links, discuss those links, and vote them up or down. For many wow. years, Dig was far more popular than Reddit, but this would all change in August of 2010, when Dig essentially committed suicide by launching a highly controversial redesign, simply known as version 4. The overhaul came after years of scandals and poor decisions and served as the final catalyst for the site's eventual downfall. The oh, redesign wow. removed or stifled many popular features, disproportionately favored advertisers, and alienated its core user base. A few days after implementation, users protested the redesign by flooding the front page with links to the site's competitor, Reddit, triggering oh, a mass migration. Shoot. Thousands of diggers became Redditors overnight, and Jesus. they never looked back. Daily visitors fell by 26% in less than a month, and searches for Reddit quickly surpassed that of Dig. Over on Reddit, Yo. new accounts skyrocketed, and five days after Dig's redesign, 14% of Reddit's total traffic came from Dig. And that's wow. not accounting for direct traffic, nor the elderly method of browsing the web. <laughs> okay. It's not elderly. <laughs> Okay, I did that. <laughs> Naturally, Reddit capitalized on their rivals' okay, misstep elderly. by welcoming the newcomers and even changed the logo to resemble that of Dick's. To better illustrate this downfall, I took the liberty to collect the highest ranked post on the front page of Dig for each day between the months of May and December of 2010. As you can see, the decline is quite evident, and many would argue Ooh. that this blunder is largely responsible for Reddit's subsequent dominance of this space. As Reddit now prepares for a major overhaul of its own, 
Who knows? Maybe history will repeat itself. Ooh, I hear that Reddit is... Your Reddit to may go. maximize the exposure of a submission on Reddit, your goal should naturally be to reach the front page. Now, regardless oh. if you're a bot disguised as a person or an <laughs> advertising firm disguised as a person, how exactly does one go about doing that? How does one even get a call magic That's what I formula know. to reaching the top? Well, sure, time of day, submission type, phrasing of the title, buying upvotes, etc. will all buying have an effect upvotes. on the success of no your submission. No shot. But the average Redditor might tell you, rather cynically, that the most effective method of accumulating karma is to copy and steal from others. Wow. Unfortunately, their cynicism wow. appears to be justified. A study from 2013 found that within a 17-day period, 52% of the submissions that reached the front page had previously been posted within that same period. Wow. Meaning that 52% of the submissions were reposts, while the other 48% were either original or reposts that merely fell outside the given time frame. Yikes. In other words, you are more likely to reach the front page by reposting a pre-existing submission than Yikes. if you were to post something original. Original. Oh. It only makes sense then for the findings of this study to have been reposted several times okay. over and for one of the most upvoted okay. submissions of all time to be complaining about the ubiquity of reposts. <laughs> <laughs> That's disgusting. Using Google's Ngram viewer, it's possible to graph the frequency of any given term across millions of books and texts spanning many centuries. If we do a search for Reddit, we find that the word has been in use since as far back as the 18th century. While the graph may be going downhill, it is in fact unrelated to the website. You see, long before the creation of Reddit.com, the portmanteau actually served as the punchline to an old joke featured here in an archived Usenet post from 1990. You can pause and read it if you'd like. In addition, Reddit is actually... Okay, read it. Uh, short version. A chicken walks into a library and says to the librarian, book, book. The librarian hands the chicken three books. On the way out, the chicken runs, runs into the frog. The chicken shows the book to be the frog. Ah! The chicken shows the book books to the frog and says book 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 and the frog replies reddit 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 ah uh... you Good can joke. pause and read it if you'd like in addition reddit is actually a surname but Those the main reason say for this apparent anachronism <laughs> kind of. is that reddit is a word in latin in latin the verb reddo can be translated as return restore or to give back the verb can then be conjugated as reddit, meaning it returns, or redditor, meaning one who returns. Oh. Although other possible definitions include to repeat and to imitate, so it's not entirely inaccurate to say that reddit literally means to repost. <laughs> ah, fair. On May the 2nd, 2015, a user by the name of R. Bradbury1920 posted a story to the Legal Advice subreddit in which they expressed concern over some mysterious post-it notes they had found in their apartment. The notes contained information which they had not revealed to anyone else, and they could not remember writing the notes themselves. Initially suspecting their landlord of posting the notes, they consulted Reddit for advice on how to proceed. However, user Kakalak hmm? offered an alternative explanation. They suggested that the post-it notes had in fact been written by Bradbury themselves, but that carbon monoxide poisoning could be affecting their memory. A few hours later, Bradbury confirmed Kakalak's theory no, with the help of a carbon monoxide sure. detector. The apartment had indeed been flooded with dangerous levels wow, of odorless gas bro, I got by way of a nearby parking That's space, and as such crazy. induced sporadic lapses in memory. In later updates, Bradbury explained that the poisoning caused brain swelling and that it took over a year for them to fully recover. Oh, it's because he's done a Reddit post. It's entirely possible saved Bradbury's life yeah, with that Jesus. simple comment. That's as a few crazy. Days or weeks in that apartment could have proved fatal. Yeah, imagine if they never posted that. Imagine. If you've been using Reddit for a while, chances are that you've seen a comment like this one. It usually works like this. A submission or comment makes a statement with two subjects. Someone then pretends to misunderstand the statement by switching mm -hmm. the two subjects. Someone then points out the formulaic nature of the joke by replying, ah, the old Reddit switcheroo, while linking back to a previous Wait, instance what? of the joke. 
In short, it's a site-specific meme with a dedicated subreddit and everything. The oh, reason wow. I bring this up is that in 2015, a user by the name of Faye Montage took advantage of this backlinking to create this intricate web of switcheroos. Hmm? Each node represents an instance of the meme and oh my it eyes. goes on for ah. years. Ah. The longest chain is 1,427 comments long and goes all the way back to the original comment posted by user June Tucson on June the 27th, 2011. Oh my god. Effectively proving that, yeah, this is a very formulaic joke. <laughs> Okay. On August the 10th, 2011, a user posted a submission to the Today I Learned subreddit with a link to the Wikipedia page for the movie Cry Baby Lane. What it's a made-for-television horror film, oh. which aired on Nickelodeon back in 2000, but due to really? poor reception, it only aired once. Oh. Ever since, people have attempted to recover a copy of the lost film, but to no avail. The film's obscurity Shit. generated a lot of wild speculation, and some even began to question the film's existence in the first <laughs> oh, place. Oh that is, God. until a Reddit user by the name of Fire Salad Peach claimed to own a VHS copy of the film, which wow. they had recorded on the day of its original broadcast. While many remained skeptical, Fire Salad Peach soon made good on their word by uploading a video of them filming the Damn. playback of the VHS on a TV screen. Proof exists. Many users then offered to convert the VHS into a modern file format, and a few days later, Fire Salad Peach uploaded the entire feature-length version of Crybaby Lane. Saved. In less than four days, Reddit managed to locate a film which countless others had failed to locate in over a decade. That's the interest crazy. generated by Reddit subsequently prompted Nickelodeon to re-release the film on Halloween of 2011. Reddit has too much power. Back That's in nuts. January of 2014, the subreddit for the meme-based cryptocurrency Dogecoin decided it was Yo. time to promote the currency on the world stage. <laughs> the question was, what would be a good way to promote a digital currency? One user had the obvious answer, winter sports. You see, the Jamaican bobsled team had to raise some 80,000 US dollars in order to compete in the 2014 Winter Olympics, and so the Dogecoin community stepped up to the challenge and donated some $30,000 worth of Dogecoins. Yo. As such, the team was able to make it to the Olympics. Oh. A few months later, the community came together once more to sponsor yet another race, except this time it was a race on wheels. Dogecoin NASCAR. would now sponsor a NASCAR race car by raising some $55,000 in a week. The aptly named Dogecar, <laughs> or Race God in reverse of course, That's was the... plastered with a Dogecoin logo and was even featured in a NASCAR video game. And now, <laughs> if all goes according to plan, a physical representation of Dogecoin will reach the moon aboard a lunar lander expected to launch in 2019. Wait, so this already happened? Wait. Independent research from 2016 found that 77% of all top voted comments were among the first 10 top level comments to be posted on a submission. Meaning that what you say is not nearly as important as when you say it. Oh. Once a submission has amassed some 50 to 100 top level comments, your chance of reaching the top is virtually zero. The best mm. sorting method, first introduced back in 2009, attempts to counteract this bias, but early birds clearly have the advantage. Oh, and another fun fact is that over 70% of submissions with more than 1,000 comments includes at least one comment about Hitler or Nazis. And that's with all what? historical subreddits excluded. Although, to be fair, this statistic does oh. not take context into oh, account. Oh, context grammar Nazi. That would, that's going to be used Back in 2011, a, a user by the name of A858DE45F56D9BC9 began dumping Christ. strings of mysterious code into a self-titled subreddit. What is that Puzzled name? Puzzled by their meaning and purpose, <sighs> curious Redditors were determined to decipher these mysterious codes, while others accused A858 of being nothing more than a troll <laughs> intent on wasting everyone's time. Eventually, a user by the name of Fraglet decoded one of the ciphers, revealing an ASCII image of Stonehenge. This is believed to be huh? a reference to a previous comment in which a user what? compared the enigmatic nature of A858 to that of the famous stone formation in England. Hmm. As the years went by, A858 continued to post enigmatic codes while amateur cryptographers struggled to crack them. 
The subreddit would sporadically be set to private only to be reopened for no apparent reason. Decoded submissions merely added to the confusion as no underlying purpose or pattern could be discerned. Hmm. <laughs> Almost just Happy New Year. <laughs> In 2014, A858 posted the same ASCII image of Stonehenge to the Pix subreddit on April Fools. Oh. Perhaps this should have been a sign of what was to come. That is, nothing. The A858 subreddit was eventually closed for good and the associated what? account was deleted. The mods of the subreddit dedicated to solving the mystery claimed to have been in contact with the people behind it and the short version is that A858 was a project funded by an unknown company for some unknown purpose. In other words, no one knows what it means or what? if it ever meant anything in the first place. A user by the name of f 0 cb 41 f 154 dd 2 f 05 a 4 a launched a similar <sighs> self-titled subreddit back Why? in 2012, Why are you but doing unlike A858, it has since been resolved. Unfortunately, mm. the resolution of f 4 c is about as anticlimactic as the premature conclusion of A858, as the decoded messages reveal nothing more than one-liners, memes, and other nonsense. Oh. If only people had listened to this premonition by use of yeah. <laughs> from six years ago. It was a troll! Unless the warning went ignored. Yeah. Personally, I would never do something like this. I would never leave hidden clues throughout my videos for my oh, audience to find. Oh, don't I would never do, do that to thing. me. Never. But if I did, yeah, I would certainly not make it so pointless. You know, some kind of reward at the end. But if I did, I would my audience to find oh, okay, it's so pointless, you know, some kind of reward at the end for whoever cracks the code first. But of course that's all irrelevant as I would never do such a thing in the first place. Sure, bud. Fair enough, good video. Good video, good video. Okay, everyone, that is the end of the video. If you enjoyed that video, make sure you check out the original description down below. Enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up, comment what you'd like me to react to next, subscribe if you're new or just haven't yet. I will see you in the next video. Laters.